Hey everyone, my name's Captain Jack and welcome back to Space Engineers. This week we're taking a look at another fantastic creation from the Steam Workshop. With me today, I have the MR-2 Long Range Planetary Exploration Rover Vanilla. This caught my eye on the Steam Workshop and I was like, yes, I must take a look at this, it looks purely awesome. So that's what we're doing inside Space Engineers today. We're taking a look at this amazing rover, seeing what it has to offer, and basically exploring it. It's going to be quite fun, it's made by Trav. You can check out the other builds via the link down below in the description, should you also want to download this one for yourself, I would recommend so. A quick description of it is, hey guys, so here's a rover, it was originally designed as a military vehicle but I managed to seal the cabin and replace extra seats with cryopods, which basically turns it into a long range exploration rover with a pretty tough armoured hull. The whole thing runs on a hydrogen fuel, electricity can be stored in the batteries, but like I mentioned before, the interior is airtight sealed. Hatches are located on both sides of the rover and can be opened from a cockpit or by just simply pressing the buttons. The hatches themselves are thanks to someone else, I'll put their name on the screen, but uh, it's really quite cool. Anyway, let's take a look at this rover. Okay, so just generally looking at it, it looks like a basic rover to begin with, but it's actually got quite a bit of detailing on top. For instance, Trav is using these very in-data lights and I have these LCD panels here to get this sort of like indication going across here. And obviously got more ground down panels going across. It's very nice. It kind of brings out more design detail to the actual design itself. He's also using some of the new armor skins. Here we have a carbon fiber one, or is it carbon fiber? What is it called again? I keep forgetting. It is, it is the carbon fiber one. I thought it was the glitter one for a minute, but it's definitely not the glitter one. He's using a combination of the carbon fiber armor with also the plain armor as well. I think this is the plain one. It's not the super smooth one, but I think he's using super smooth here as well. So a good combination of armor skins all the way around, really making use of that decorative DLC and the other DLC that kind of came with it. I think it was a star one, wasn't it? That really made the um, looks of Space Ninja's creation stand out. On the side here, he's not using any of them to make it sort of look a bit more rough, which makes sense. But also an interesting design little tidbit here, using sound blocks on the axle of a wheel here with suspension is a very interesting way of laying the suspension out. I don't know, I just find it quite fun and it's a bit of an interesting thing. I've not seen anyone do this before. It's only on the front wheels as well, I guess because these are more built in there. It's really nice and unique, you know, I don't really see that often, so I'm surprised. Also under here as well, we have the small ship batteries with a bit of the blaster blocks here. Again, I'm not sure if it serves any purpose, obviously the batteries do, but having this laid out like this, Kind of looks like a cool design. Also, rotor up here as well. Kind of just looks like the front hitch for something, I guess. You also got that mark there as well. Again, using more LCD blocks, which is very nice. Lit a couple of headlights here as well. And obviously got the front headlights as well. Very nice. In there, you can see the cockpit. So if you're sat in, which we'll show you in a minute, you can see everything out of here. But we'll take a look at that finally when we actually get in the ship. In anyway, we're going around, this thing does have eight wheels, which is a... Uh, Packing quite a lot. We can see the doors over here. This is sealed apparently, so we'll explore this in a second. You can see there's a lot of design detailing going on here, including these sort of rivet bits on the side, which are very cool. Laser antenna on the back. Very interesting choice of having a laser antenna. Um, I guess it can connect up to other things, or it can be used like a mobile command post. I don't know, it offers a lot of variety there. Another hitch on the back. I don't typically see hitches on rovers inside a space engineer, so it's quite nice to see that for a change. I remember days of hitching horse trailers up and stuff like that. Yes, very fun. Anyway, let's look at the inside. Let's go into my character mode, and we're going to press the button, and boop. It unseals. Oh, I see. It just folds down to a door. So can I, I walk in? Oh, I've got to jump over it a little bit. There we go. Okay, and now can I seal again? So it's using merge blocks to seal up there. That is really interesting. That is really cool. I love the way that's done. However, I could see if I designed anything like that, it would probably break really, really badly. Okay, so inside here is our sort of crew cabin. Got a couple of cryo tubes up here, which is nice. I love how they fit in as well. These are the small ship cryo tubes laying down here so you can walk up. So I guess you can have a couple of crew in, in cryo there if you need them. I'm not sure why you need crew on cryo. Maybe you're exploring the moon or something. I don't know. Survival kit over here as well. Nice to have a survival kit inside of Space Engineers now. As again, we need something like that. A smaller medical bay essentially. So it does make a lot more sense. I believe this is either the hydrogen tank or the O2 tank over here. I'm not sure what the hydrogen engine is. Let's listen for it. It must be this one or something around here. It's probably back there. It's definitely around here somewhere because I can hear it. The interior is nicely laid out. I am now stuck in here. Don't ask why I keep wearing my suit. Oh, I'm definitely stuck. It's also got a control seat back over here as well. I'm not sure what this one does. I thought it like control a turret or something, but I guess not. I guess you could sit here and control the cryo tubes. There's another door access bit over here as well. Very nice. We'll, uh, we'll bring that back. What does this button do? Oh, it just turns off the interior lights. Okay, darkness. Uh, okay, we've got two buttons here for the doors. That's perfectly fine. Cockpit access up here. So there you go. We're in the cockpit of the ship now, or rover. And uh, we can turn the hydrogen engine on or off. But I guess we can press P and give it a go. Let's see how this thing moves. So this is the MR-2 Long Range Planetary Exploration Rover. So it does move quite fast for an exploration rover. We're getting up to 40. Quite nippy as well. Very nice. I like it. I'm in the mood of designing some more sort of rover vehicles for RWI at the minute featuring Conley Lost. Let me know if you're enjoying that series, by the way. So I definitely want to... Um, I definitely want to include this at some point. 
or have this like included like over a road vehicle. This seems like a really cool thing, especially for speed it travels. Well. I mean, look at this. We're tearing up the ground at the minute. Hopefully not going to crash into anything. Right, let's hit the brake. Oh, brake's a bit snappy. Okay, what else do we have? Let's hop in the cockpit a second. We've got a clock over there. Um, damage blocks, more stuff, hull systems. Artificial horizon there, so as we drive around, that changes. Very nice. Oh, and a bearing with a compass. Ah, so I can travel east. That is really cool to have. I need it on more ships. Okay, number three. This is the front view. Number four, rear view. Number five, upwards or downwards? I think that's downwards. Okay. Um, number five. What have we got? Or six. Oh, what have we got here? Ramp left, ramp right. Connectors, connectors. Uh, front hatch, detach. Oh, I can detach these. Okay, right. Let's play around with this and break it all. That didn't do anything. No? Okay. I think we just... We deployed a parachute and it glitched out. Oh, there we go. Beacons turn on. We can play with a bunch of buttons. They don't seem to do anything. Watch as everything explodes in about five seconds. I wonder if we can play with doors while in transit. This is like a dangerous weapon here. Oh, <laughs> that definitely didn't work. Oh, no. No. Well, there you go. You, you don't play with that in transit. That's lesson learned for the day, I think. Um, again, a typical Captain Jack review here. It's It's gone off the rails. We are crashing people's creations yet again. But this thing travels quite nippy. I mean, look at that. As I said that, we've just barrel rolled up a hill. I'd say this is job well done. Look, we immediate escape doors. Problem solved. I do like the fact of having those doors there. It's quite cool. Okay, cool. Well, that wraps up my little video on the MR-2 Long Range Planetary Exploration Rover. This was quite a fun thing to play around with. Should you download it and check it out for yourself? Absolutely. There'll be a link down below via the description. Make sure to check out Trav's other creations. I believe they have a ton of stuff on the workshop, which is obviously as fantastic as this, as it looks brilliant. I really enjoyed this, and thanks to him, and I think it was... Hanoi Hank for using the door there, the merge block doors. Very cool concept, and this is one of the reasons I love Space Engineers. These sort of awesome things here where you can get the doors to merge in there, and you can create an airtight seal inside the ship is really cool, and I love it. Because you can imagine using this on the moon, where you can pressurize the inside, and if we actually had more like, sort of usability, I guess, for the need for pressurized environments, maybe uh, in a future update, or maybe a future iteration of a game if we're ever doing one, this sort of design could work really well. Because you go in there, take your helmet off, pressurize the environment, We'll probably pressurize it then take your helmet off, that's probably the best order, and go from there. It would make a lot more sense to have pressurized environments, and I think this type of design would fit really well. Anyway, to save me waffling on, do let me know if you decide to download this creation and play around with it, and let me know what you think of it down below in the comments section. As usual, I'm always interested in your opinions, and I'm pretty sure the creator would love to know what you think of his or her build as well. In the meantime, I've been Captain Jack, thank you for watching this video, and I will catch you next time. Goodbye.